I will have you know something, Internet. Before I, before I hopped on the mic, man, you know what I'm saying, to get these thoughts out, I did a couple of things. It's like I went back and rewatched not only the bootleg gameplay trailer, but the actual gameplay trailer. I went back and watched the extended first gameplay trailer, and I read a couple of hands-on just to try to get all of this in this nice little ball of Triple the God tries to understand Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And I have come away with the following. I get it. Like... Yesterday, when the boot when the bootleg gameplay trailer came out, I'm sitting up here watching it and trying to dichotomize it and just coming away with what I thought and things and stuff like that. Because given the hands-on that I read and all the stuff that I looked at was... One thing I didn't see mentioned that I heard was in the game was the round system. And it's like I haven't heard anything because... Unless they really think that matches are going to go by so fast that they have to be decided in the best of two out of three in a in a in a normal fighting game format, I just don't know. But the thing is, and the honest truth is that from the versus series, given on how on how angled you want to look at it, is that the round a round system in a versus game isn't that divorced or unfamiliar. You may have seen or played the PlayStation version of many of your favorite versus games, mainly that being X Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Superhero vs. Street Fighter, and Marvel vs. Capcom. Even though those games were toned down and different in a way, those are technically versus games that have rounds in them. But it would, but it's like, but what the EX, what the EX versions of the game does are way more different than anything that's ever been on display because. A lot of how the Versus series evolved came from a lot of those gameplay mechanics that had to be added to make the EX games a lot more palatable and playable to those who couldn't access the arcade version. I'm like, that's where delayed hyper combos and shit came from, from the e, from the EX game. So it's like, when we get to it and get around to it, I'm going to really show y'all like in depth, mainly for X-Men. X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Marvel Super Marvel vs. Street Fighter, and Marvel vs. Capcom, like, how amazing the EX games are as games that complement their big brother arcade counterpart. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I ain't heard nothing about that or anything I read, so I don't know what that is or what that means, and once we get a hold of something, I'll holler at y'all about that. The honest thing that after, because, like, I watched all this stuff and read all this stuff, and again, dichotomized it into I'm trying to understand what's going on. It's like I said, I get it. It's like, I understand, like, how even though that I read things that, you know, that ring into my head of things that I might want to be scared of is that, yeah, you press you press low punch a whole bunch and shit happens. That's like in every fucking fighting game now. I'm like, thank you, Persona. It's like they got a, they got a combo where if you go low punch, low kick, high kick, high punch, shit happens. Because the thing is, is that, Again, and I and I completely agree with the mindset of Capcom where they're coming from. They're they trying to sit up here and trying to like lower the execution bar to like a degree where anybody can play it. It was kind of like the issue that I, I kind of sort of had with with Street Fighter Cross Tekken where I thought that they needed to like lower it down just a little bit more. And I really think that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite hits that execution bar for anybody to legitimately get in there and mash buttons with characters that they know from the movies and shit like that and just make dumb funny shit happen. Hell, if you press high punch and high kick, like level ones happen. I'm like, if we gonna sit up here and we gonna legitimately be for real, even in Ball vs. Capcom 2 and 3, like actually doing the special, actually doing your hyper move with two buttons was actually a viable tactic with characters with frying pants named Sentinel. Republic of Black Sentinel was really good. But, you know what I'm saying, to, to read and understand, like, this is where they going with this. It's like, yo, I'm with it. The thing that really legitimately like reading, like like watching the gameplay trip and definitely reading the hands-on from people that play it is the importance that it, that are being put on the Infinity Stones. Is that the Infinity Stones from the way I read it and the way it's been described by those, you know what I'm saying, who who have done it and played it and words from combo and shit like that, 
the Infinity Stone is your third player. It's like, it's going to really make, like, once, like, high level, like, like when we start thinking about this game at high level, is that very few games, as much as I am, you know, as I am going to admit this, don't really do metagame at the character select screen, like, in a way that makes sense, that really makes the choices that you make matter. In Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, choosing an Infinity Stone with the team you have is really going to matter. Because the only way you can fill your, your Infinity Meter is by using is by using your Infinity Stone. So, you have to really, like, legitimately be at the character select screen. Know the characters you're going to play and know what fits best for you. Because we learned finally, like, we learned finally what the infinity, what the three infinity stones do. It's like, power gives you a wall bounce. Space brings you closer. And time gives you this air dash. Now, the thing is, when it comes to the time gem is wondering like do characters in the game still have air dashes along with the time gem and how does it work and things like that is you have I'm like these are things that I'm really thinking about because the thing that in all the gameplay that I didn't see because I was looking like deeply at the time stone to like really like figure out like how that air dash works is can a character like do a combo Activate time, like work behind, like do like a dash through their opponent and then continue with combo like that. Something like that would be extra nuts and I don't think you can pull it off given how dynamic tagging is. It's like I read about how tags work and when I went back and watched the um the first gameplay trailer, it's like you can tag all day. Tag, tag, tag. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they are really emphasizing trying to make sure that your partner if it's just a part of the fight instead of just sitting on the sidelines. You know what I'm saying? It's like hell. It's like they got their version of the Mega Crash from Tatsunoko versus Capcom where if you hold the switch button, what you do is you tag in your partner for two meters and your job with your partner is to stop from getting your ass beat. It kind of remind me, it kind of remind me of what happens when rival schools, like, not in Project Justice to be accurate. Where if you do a if you do a team up attack and then you press two buttons and then your homies come out and then y'all fight to see like are you gonna get the team attack off or not? Yes or no. It, it remind me of that, but in a whole different degree. And again, like I said, it's going to be fun to like watch all this stuff come together. Like once we learn about all the stones and all their different abilities, it's like. To sit up here and already and people are sitting up here thinking about the stones in a way that enhance what your characters do. It's like we've had games over the years where I can even describe them where you have games like Dragon Ball Z with skill systems and things like that. Where you have games like Melty Blood where the groove you select grossly affects what it is you can actually do in battle. And I really think that if the stones are balanced in a way that give that give you the option of understanding that I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do that. How do I make this, this, this into that and make it happen? That's the kind of meta game at the character select screen that this game needs. And currently, right now has that understanding and knowing that like I said I want to do this I want to do this and I want to do that I want to combine all of this and that little bit of that and make it that so that when I get on a battlefield that what I want to do and I can make it happen however I is I feel like a lot I'm like and I'm gonna tell you a lot of the beginning of this game a lot of the beginning of what this game is and will be in its early meta will be thinking about characters in a way that for example you are going to see a lot 
of grapplers with space. Because I am going to bring you over here to me. Bring you right over here so I can grab the shit out of you. Given what I've seen in the trailer, Hulk, Hulk slam your ass and then fucking do a floor bounce. And then he wall bounces you and then combos you. That's insane. You have to sit up here and wonder with characters that are not as dynamic as other characters. Like, having something that does a wall bounce like Power Stone on command is nuts. To be able to, because in most instances, you probably would just wall bouncing for the extra damage into a super. As for a head confirmed. Or if you wall bounce them, you can follow up with an area rave and do that. It's like, the options are already there. It's like, like I said earlier, time is probably going to be, like, as of right now, that's probably going to be my go-to. That's going to be my go-to stone because I feel that characters who need, like, air dashes or way to minute to close the gap in an offensive way because that's what it does it's like oh you throwing something at me let me punish you for that because you were idiot for throwing that fireball because i have this thought so when you sit up here and again like i say going right back to the character select screen of understanding that this is what your opponent is doing this is what i can do in counters to them and go back and forth like that you know what i'm saying you can really do all of that if you like to. You know what I'm saying? And it's like looking at this and reading this and trying to absorb what we have right now. This, this game look amazing. It, even if if it's a little slap, if it even if it's a little too slap happy rhythm busters to me, you know. But slap happy rhythm busters is my shit. So to understand and see that this is the control scheme. This is what we're trying to do. It's like I'm trying to sit up here and before I hit and before I hit record and I got on the mic, I was sitting up here trying to figure out like how this gonna work. There's a low punch, the low buttons and high button. There are no mid buttons. There's a partner button and there's the gym button. It's like in past games, you probably it, this probably would have been a five button, a five button format and then Something activates the gym, but there's a button for it now. And if you press the partner button in that, you get the Infinity Storm. So it's like they're trying to stay up here and say, they try, like I said, we talked about earlier. They're trying to bring it down to a level where anybody can play it. It's like I remember when Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was first revealed. And I remember like when I used to do my E3 things every year, you know what I'm saying? Like when it was just me, me and the camera. And you know, back me in the camera in my old apartment sitting up here talking shit. I remember what I said that an alternate control scheme would be nice. And I really think that honestly, for real, that in this instance, even with you can press high punch or high kick and make a level one happen. This is a game that given all of this mechanics needs an alternate control scheme. I can understand that you that you want little John, Jimmy, and a mama to sit up here and roll a diamond across the PS4 controller and for shit to happen. But for me, I would prefer for me, given that this is what it is, is that give me all normal commands. I'm like, I remember people freaking out when they thought that the short you was going to be a down, down command. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that ain't that ain't abstract and normal. Again, didn't I just say slap happy rhythm busters? Hell, I mentioned Melty Blood and I'll do it again. I'm like, that, that fucking command ain't new. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Is that I really think that honestly, and I will say this again, that this is a game that needs a more advanced control scheme. I'm like, Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, they do it. This is a game that honestly, that I would feel more comfortable. That if I want to activate, that if I want to activate my jam, that I want to be able to press a button. Like, let me press low kick high punch to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, put those commands within it, but you can leave it alone. I'm like, you ain't got to make an alternate control scheme. Say that. If I want to do this or whatever, then if I want to do this, let me press, like I said, low punch, low punch, low kick and high punch, you know what I'm saying, to activate my stall if that's what I want to do. Because again, I play Tekken, I play KOF, I'm used to pressing two buttons at the same time, like, like two diagonal buttons, I am used to that, I'm okay with that. Like, if you want to activate, if you want to activate Infinity Storm, high punch, high kick and the part in the butt. Boom. It's like, if you really gonna go, if you really finna go down to this low level for people, for for, for, for Jimmy, John, Joan, and their mom and all this old shit, 
Give me something advanced as fuck to fuck with on the other side. I understand that it may take some work or do something like that, but I really feel that given what we have right now in this dynamic of whatever the fuck it is, I feel that as far as control team, that just seems like a fair trade-off to me. If you gonna sit up here and you just gonna get it down to the basics, give me the season fighting gameplay as something advanced. It's not gonna happen. It's something that I would appreciate that let me let me activate my Infinity Gym by doing a combo and go boom, just like that. Let me activate Infinity Storm. Boom, let me hit three buttons. I'm with that. I'm with that. That That's something that I'm with. I'm, I'm something, I'm sitting up here, like, in my head, like, pretending, like, trying to figure out, like, if they wanted to do an advanced control scheme, how could they do it? And I really think that, honestly, this game, for fighting game players who use a stick, would, would appreciate a control scheme for them. If that, yeah, you want to sit up here, and I read it, that you want to make, that you want to sit up here and say, well, you don't need a you don't need a oh, motherfucker two hundred dollar arcade stick. But for the people who invested such and such and so and so in their arcade stick for this game, if you finna if you finna sit up here and lower the execution bar that low, you finna persona this shit, and we gonna talk about that just in two seconds. Give me something up here. You know what I'm saying? Because again, like I just I just mentioned persona that we gonna go into it real quick before I get up out of here. Is persona four. The Ultimate in Monaco Arena was a game changer fighting game when you look at it as in this. Simply because of what that game made an attempt to do and how every and how fighting games since then follow it. If you don't know the story of how Persona 4 in the way that it controlled came to be, here's the simple thing. Our system works new and understood. That 99.9% of the people who are finna play this fucking video game are not playing this game because it's a fighting game. No, they're playing this game because they want to catch up with these characters who they've invested years and years and years in. And they just want to see where their favorite characters from Persona 3 and 4, what they doing, how it's going and things like that. So we need to give them something for them to understand that. Well, if you do this, 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 and this, you can get through the story mode. And but then it was enough death within this is this is this for everybody else that want to get down. I just feel that given the control scheme that they're talking about right now, I don't know if Marvel feels that for me at the moment. Is that I remember that when I said what I said about Marvel three so long ago about the control scheme that they should have an alternate one, but then it's like you got fucking used to it. And it just may be an instance where you're gonna have to hold the L and just fucking get used to it. That's just what it is. And given what I've seen and all this stuff is that it's a game that's worth trying to get used to what the fuck is going on. So it's like, for all this old extra stuff is that, you know what I'm saying? Because it was the same thing that after I came down on the rush system from KOF of me ultimately understanding that while this, pressing this does something, you ultimately want to get to the point of understanding what pressing this does and why it ha- why it happens the way it happens. That's why when I did my triple to God explained it off of King of Fighters ninety four and ninety five, and when I continue to go through the series, is that understand how combo composition works. That if you actually give two squirts a piss about why pressing this button or why rolling your finger across the PS4 controller does something and understanding why you should be able to understand that and take half the feedback of understanding that this is, while I do this, why does it work? And that's the only thing that if pressing that button or rolling it across makes cool shit happen. Make sure that it's enough for someone to get engaged and to understand why that works. And instead of me doing this this can thing, let me find out how to how to vary my offense. And that's all you can really ask. Again, the, the game looks amazing. I'm like, I'm already in my head theory fighting, playing this game in my head of stones and character combinations and the things you can do and the new tools that I've seen around. Like this game just seemed dynamic. I'm like. I'm like, I was like mad surprised that Hulk, he just sitting up for bouncing people off walls and uppercutting like this shit is nuts. I'm like, Chris had a play of mine mid-combo and then re-picked him up. And I'm sitting up like, huh? I'm like, this shit's insane. And it's like, 
given like the characters that you want, the characters you want to see, it's like this is gonna be something to see. It's like at this point, let me just say this. I hope it's more than six DLC characters. I hope they finna put some real weight behind this damn game because you can add some characters and you can really mix some shit up, dude. You really can. And it's like, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. So it's like, right now, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, the one and the only, I'm with you. I'm with everything you want to do. You want to sit up here, you want to lower the execution bar down to one. So Jimmy, John, Joe, Jim, and their mama want to play the fucking game. I'm okay with that. If Capcom don't want to do an alternate control scheme like other fighters do to try to sit up here and to try to make it better for those who are more experienced, that's fine. Do whatever the hell you want. I won't play this video game. That's that. That's it. I'm like, I'm sold. I was already going to buy your bling bling rock edition of this damn video game because I got money to blow like that. But now I'm going to buy it with some pride in my heart to, to know that if the game keeps on this trajectory that we are going to be in for a fucking treat. And given that honestly the most important point, Capcom learned their lesson about Street Fighter V. They sat up here and they try and they tried to fucking pull them. They tried to pull a body on the on, on, on fighting game Coonery Land and it just did not happen. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, it just seemed they learned a lesson. They got a story mode. Remember? The, I'm like, I don't know if y'all remember. The story mode they promised for Marvel vs. Capcom 3. It was supposed to be this long drawn out story mode, supposed to be it was supposed to be narrated by Stanley, whole nine, everything, and it just didn't happen. I'm like, I hope they get Stanley to narrate this game, because that would be sick as fuck. The legend, one of the legends to, man, I'm like, that'd be sick as hell. That'd be sick as hell. I'm like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to see what's up. I'm ready to see. How Ultron and Sigma teaming up now. I want to know about this. And it's like, and that was another thing before I got out of here that I didn't think of or even mention, like even when the game first came out, even when we learned about Ultron Sigma. There's a reason why X is the front man and so is Tony Stark. You know what I'm saying? Cause they talked about it in one of these in one of these um breakdowns that I read that the um that the um that the collection mode in the game had both Dr. Light and Tony Stark in it. Is that I don't know how Dr. Light has anything to do with Sigma, but you can sit up here and draw all your comparisons, something about dead Dr. Kane or something, I don't know. But, X and Sigma all day, and in the movie, Tony Stark is responsible for Ultron, not Hank Pym the way it should be. I wonder if the fuck, I wonder if fucking Janet gonna be in this game. I'm like, I don't even know how you will fucking make a move list for Janet Van Dyne, but I'd love to see Capcom try it. That would be interesting to see. I'm like, that's another character I want to see. I want to see if they can make characters like that work in Squirrel Bay. But, you know, that's another conversation. I'm like, you know what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if they if they do the dumb shit like give Vanessa Schneider in this game, it's a fucking rap, sir. Ma'am, it, they attack helicopter, you know, labels, whatever. Look, I'm with whatever this game want to do. I'm with whatever this game wants to do. And we we sat up here and we've gone I've gone over and over and over and over again. I'm in my head right now it's rapping with y'all playing theory fighter like stones and character combinations. It's like this right here, like what's going on is kinda what I want a Street Fighter Tekken to be. Like, except Street Fighter Cross Tekken, even for all the gym shitting it gets or whatever, is the game that I want. But the dynamic nature of this game is kind of what I wanted from the crossover from that game that we're getting here. It is the same problem, and I will always mention it, that I, as much as I love Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, was the, ish, the one issue I had with the game was the game wasn't dynamic enough in its crossover and team-up portion that... Street Fighter Cross Tech is solid video game. It, it is the it is the coming of Capcom vs. SNK3. You want it, but didn't realize you had it and never fucking will. And Neo Geo Battle Coliseum just had wasted potential left on the fucking table. This looks like zero wasted potential because they are going in, going dumb. Honestly, and I will say this two eyes on my mind. 
treating this series and treating this and going back to basics with this and taking everything you've learned and making this and not calling it Marvel vs. Capcom 4, but calling it Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity as a as a semi soft hard it reboot. Wonder wonderful play. That just seems like the thing that makes sense. Something, something, they shouldn't have called that game the King of Fighters 12, even though I love it to death. See? That's that. I'm like, I'm talked out. I'm like, I ain't had nothing to eat. I got in the house. I had some things I had to do. And I knew I wanted to sit down and make this video. So I sat down and just sat down for a couple minutes and watched all three trailers. Absorb, you absorb these hands on from these people. And I came back with my own stuff, which you guys have heard. And I'm with this game. I, I want to see what this game wants to do. What its identity is going to be and what its legacy going to be for the future of the fighting game. Because you can only wonder the possible things they could do. It's like, you wonder, it's like one of the things that I really that I really thought that the series would ultimately get to would be unbalanced teams. Was something that I wanted to see. It's like, I know it's like Tekken Tag Unlimited did it, you know what I'm saying? Things like that, you know, like well, unbalanced teams, like were not like KOF, you know, KOF 2001, that was just, you know. A semi mess with thick angel in it, but that think about like I'll give y'all this to think about. Y'all write me in the comments about it though. Where say you don't want an infinity stone but a third character. Say you want to fuse infinity stones, but you want to run a solo joint. Oh wait, a game does that. Oh, it's called Skull Girl. See, never mind. See, answer my own question. See, a, a wonderful fighting game does. Does unbalanced size and does it very well. That game is called Skull Girls. You can play it. Still salty about Philly, under nine and birth, whatever. But I would love to see like Marvel do like unbalanced sides and combine shit with Infinity Stones and things like that. Like I've I've had this idea for years about a Tokusatsu fighting game, but I will not talk about my idea live. You're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to wrap with you. I've been thinking about this four years I have like the design doc written for it like the basics of understanding because I got that idea from playing a bunch of schoolgirls about how you could work that with assists and specials and things like that but we will talk about that another time I want to see what's next I really do I'm like between this all the taking news that dropped Dangon Fever Run ain't came out yet and I really want to play some Dang Gun Fever Run. I really, really do. I ain't got a PS4. Like, I could play some Dang Gun Fever Run if I want to. It's this thing I have. It's called an Xbox. It's on there. I can play the motherfucker if I want. So I'm waiting for the PS4 version to come out. And just like, I'm just waiting. Just waiting. I'm like, based, based M2, based Cave doing its work. We talked about Senko no Ronde 2 earlier today. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I told you. Waiting for the Japanese girls with the rainbow shooting out their asses. Come to the G.O.D. I'm waiting for you, baby. But for real, that's that. That that that's that. There's nothing. There's plenty to be said, but it would just be retreads on the things I said. As more of this stuff comes out, as more info and things like that, I'm gonna be doing these on a regular basis. As more stuff comes out, and do I do this normally? But I'm gonna be doing it with a fervor because this game has me really interested in what it is that it wants to do. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here, man. We, I got work cooking. Work cooking. Always in the kitchen, in the lab. Lab coat on, chef hat on. Working, cooking, creating, doing everything. I'm the best in the business, I know this. Go ahead and get up out of here. You know what it is, and you know who it is. It's the one, meow, the triple, the G-O-D. And I'd like to thank you for joining me. For another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks on. And with that, it's Marvel Bay!